Hi there, this is Usha Pandit, your Mind Springs English teacher. Today I'm continuing with the pre primary series and I'm going to do math, numeracy. That is an area that most people are completely perplexed about because they don't know what to do. They're like, what do you do with pre primary for math? So they start counting numbers from 1 to 10 and then 1 to 20 and then 1 to 50 and then 1 to 100 and then send the kids up. Or they might then start getting them to write the numbers O N E T W O and then start on the ordinals and then the cardinals and then they go on and on with the numbers. They might introduce shapes. So they do introduce shapes and they say match the shape to this, match the shape to that. So essentially they are giving the children extremely basic commonsensical stuff that they might learn in those two or three years naturally. Okay. So in math you will have for example number representation which means writing the number. So when you see two things you say two and then you write two. Now this is very basic a lot of children count from 1 to 10 easily. That is one of the first things their moms teach them to count from 1 to 10. So it's not rocket science and I really don't know why we are repeating that all over again doing the same thing and I think there's a certain lack of imagination in that. So today I'm going to help you with this okay. So the other thing they do is number sense which means when you see three things do you know it's three they do patterns they do shapes. So this is about the curriculum that you will get in a book a pre-primary book traditional one not not one that you know people have designed with a lot of meticulous thinking. So now we are going to look at how to do better things with numbers even if you take the same numbers what are you going to do about it that's going to be extraordinary and you will not be able to do anything extraordinary with it if you do not integrate it to life and why is that because math is life and the whole world around you is a book. So if you look at anything you will be able to count things. So if you look at the table you will be, there will be two things. If you look at the, uh, uh, the plugs you will find two plugs or three plugs. So you don't need to go anywhere. You can actually count it all over uh, you know the, the room that you are in and so can the children. It needs to be linked to subjects. So you can whether you are doing EVS or whether you are doing uh, English or whether you are doing pictures or whether you are doing poems or stories there is math sitting everywhere and you just need to get the child connected to that math. Life applications, math is full of life applications, you bring a pizza home and you cut it and there are children fighting over the big and small, I got a small piece, don't 3 year olds do that which means they are already familiar with the concept of big and small. Now we are asking them to do terrible things like put a truck and then a feather and then say connect it and say which is big and which is small which is I think insulting their intelligence. I mean of course a feather is light and a truck is heavy. You don't need anyone to tell you that when they are already dividing their pizzas and fighting over it. So my point is don't talk down to children they are smart okay so life applications. So let me give you simple examples to get you started. So one is let us look at shapes. Let us take something like the hexagon. Now the hexagon you might say is such a hard shape. We only do squares and circles and uh, then we do triangles with the children. So that is my syllabus. Now when you start putting things into syllabus like that what happens is you short change and limit the life experiences of a child. So now when he looks at a hexagon he has no clue what it is, he is just seeing it as some shape because you haven't given him a label, you haven't given him a thought process with the hexagon. If you are going to teach him a hexagon by constantly asking him to match the hexagon to a shape what you are doing is actually again limiting him to one particular process of recognition of that hexagon. Instead if you start looking at a beehive what happens? You will see hexagons sitting there automatically. If you allow the child to take a whole bunch of um, let us say uh, sticks, matchsticks or um, any other uh, big sticks, you can take the, the satay sticks, 
if you take those kind of sticks and you give them jelly beans or you give them salt dough or you give them something soft to fit they can actually make a 3d hexagon now these are the kind of things that children enjoy and don't worry if they fail because they'll start looking at other people they'll start learning how to do it they'll understand the dynamics of a hexagon better because you have given them that experience they do not have to master it they simply have to be exposed to it but you are now looking at the hexagon in many places in the book itself if you've got matter sitting in a hexagon shaped box if you've got instead of one two three in ordinary circles if you've got a hexagon sitting here and there it's an extra layering of that hexagon on the mind who said children cannot learn the hexagon and you wouldn't i wouldn't be afraid of using the word hexagon because i'd say which one is the hexagon and they'll say that's number three and if one person says it everyone has heard it and that's layering two so do not be afraid to teach them wonderful things and then they will start looking at tiles they will start looking at various places a carpet anywhere where there are hexagons and there is an excitement that can only come from knowledge okay so let me give you another one let's take spatial maths so the other aspect of space maths is spatial maths so when you look at a hexagon you will not see any curves you'll only see corners so we look at how many shapes have got corners and how many shapes have got circles do the circle ones fit together or do the square ones fit together this can be a hands on exercise and it's great fun you might also do an up down in out near far and that's perspectives so when you look at a car from a plane what does it look like and when you stand on the road what does it look like that's essentially thinking about what happens when you're far and near what happens to those shapes what happens to those objects and that's excellent science as well as maths perspectives you might want to use it in craft you might you want to use it in poetry you might want to use it in language in role play in optical illusions in everything there is some kind of perspective and spatial maths sitting right there so that's one now if you don't know how to use all of these things one of the ways to do it is to actually subscribe to the magic box which is the curriculum set that i'm producing because all of these will come in as beautiful activities for children throughout the three years of their pre-primary in math you will get problem solving so if i put three glasses full and three glasses empty and i ask the child to manipulate it so that the full and half alternate that child is going to have a lot of fun and he's going to learn alternates right number operations will come in stories whether it's the monkey and the cat whether you're using play-doh in order to make it equal so the business of making equal is not easy you give a lump of play-doh child uh, divides it and then you'll get small and big and then you will keep on dividing it try and make it equal that's the mandate and that's a lot of fun you do skip counting versus adding and you just say i'm going to time you you add and you skip count and let's see who finishes faster it's an exciting game if you do games you can do surveys you can do games and you can do tally numbers so one two three four five kids love it they're probably saying oh my god this is so grown up right so that's another thing you can do who wants to write number 4 30 times tell me if you spend time on that the child is already switched off maths and then that stays with him till the end of time art geometric shapes critical thinking problem solving construction all of these will build into a whole bunch of great mathematical activity measurements balance physics weight and floating lightweights and heavyweights bases small and big bases for stability all of these whether you're building a tower or whether you're floating a boat it's excellent science and it's excellent mathematics quantitative reasoning of big and small as i told you but just doing the concept which is big which is small is a waste of time you need to apply it because concepts strengthen when they are being used you just name them they have no meaning 
but when you use them the concept gets strengthened again i'm telling you i don't want him to master it i want him to experience it because that is the business of experiential learning estimation put something in a bowl grapes in a bowl and say guess how much how many there will be and then they are so they have to look at it they look at it from all sides and then they take a guess and then we see who is the closest now the minute you say who is the closest someone guesses it almost right there is an automatic learning a sight learning that happens with children as far as quantities are concerned so my dear friends there's so much to do it's so exciting the magic box is a curriculum for you ask for the details call us on the number that is flashing there make sure you write in the comments box what you think about this amazing thing that i've just uh, delineated to you and subscribe make sure that you go to our website and look at these books they are there in the brochure as, at least is in detail for you to see and enjoy those kids and let them enjoy the great exploration called life so until we meet again keep smiling enjoy your kids <laughs>